Bridges connect people. That's their fundamental purpose, but it can be easy to lose sight of how powerful that truly is. My name is Megan Kuhn. I'm an engineering analyst for the Montana Department of Transportation, and I had a once in a lifetime chance to join a group of bridge professionals led by the National Steel Bridge Alliance on a trip to Gihororo, Rwanda to build a very special bridge. I'm so excited that it will support children being able to come to school and farmers and agriculture workers being able to cross the river. The Nyabarongo River runs for more than 200 miles in Rwanda before eventually flowing into the Nile. It's the border between the country's western and southern provinces and it can be almost 100 meters wide at this particular spot. And right now we're in the dry season, so during the rain, it's very terrible. People from the other district to this district cannot really connect. We understand that it takes three hours to drive um, round trip to go all the way around from one side of the river to the other. And so now people from that hill will be able to walk over or across to this hill in roughly five minutes. So that's probably gonna be the biggest impact that the bridge will have. Working with Bridges to Prosperity and the local communities, we built a steel trail bridge to give a rural community safer, more reliable access to schools, hospitals, and markets. It's such a formidable border. In fact, our team could only safely work from one side of the river. There was another team working on the other side, but we couldn't actually meet them until we finished the bridge. We're almost halfway right now and be able to shake their hands and give them high fives that we're gonna be able to do this together on the opposite side is gonna be really cool. We had just two weeks to complete the bridge and from day one, we knew it would be a challenge. Coming out through the banana grove, into the work site, I saw the tower, and a mile away was the other tower, and I thought, oh my goodness, we have to put a bridge between these two things. I was shocked by how much work was ahead of us, but the pace that we hit the ground running, you know, re reassured me that we were gonna be able to get it done. Oh, and there was one more big challenge. We didn't have any heavy equipment. Two, three, so, I mean, whoa. the experience working with, with just no machinery. It's, it's been wild to see what we can do when we work together on, on basic tools and just using grit and strength. Needless to say, it was the most hands-on project any of our team had ever worked on. Look at this thing. It's longer than a football field and like 60 of us, 30 on each side, built it by hand in, in two weeks. In the last two weeks, I've learned more than I probably have in the past few years before that. So it's just a totally different learning experience. It, so usually we're in the office uh, on a computer looking at the monitor. But when you come out and you actually see some of the things that you draw and you have to build them, um, it can make your mind activate to, to the point where you can think of, of new, better ideas because you, you, you think of the labor that actually has to go into the things that you're drawing. But those challenges brought huge rewards because we knew what our hard work meant for the people we saw every day. Yesterday, I was looking across the bridge at a, a bunch of school children um, on the other side and thinking about how amazing it's going to be to make new friends on the other side of the bridge and how um, they'll be connected to new people and can explore new ideas. It just made me kind of take a step back and just think about how this could be life-changing in a lot of different ways that we didn't even expect. I will never forget Inauguration Day when the two communities were able to cross the bridge together for the first time. It also gave us a chance to reflect on our experience in Rwanda. 
We're greeted with warm smiles and waves every time we come through the villages and towns. And I think that's probably the most exciting part. Clearly we built a bridge, so that's exciting too, but probably the most exciting part is just the happiness with everybody in the community. I really learned how patient everybody is and how much of a community they share here. They're all supporting one another and being there for one another, and I love that. Bridges to Prosperity continues to build bridges in rural areas of the world, and the National Steel Bridge Alliance will keep leading teams from the professional bridge world to make a difference in communities like these. That's what drives the Bridges to Prosperity program. They believe that safe access is a human right and that building bridges can directly fight rural poverty. So, if all this sounds like the kind of challenge you'd enjoy, you have the opportunity to try it. I personally can't recommend it enough. Uh, it's one thing to, to contribute money to build a bridge, and it's another thing to volunteer. So, yeah, I think it's been a life-changing experience for each and every one of the team members who worked on this. You know, to take this experience home and. It, it, even to try to explain it to people is going to be almost impossible because it's been such a, a tremendously life-changing experience. I mean, when I look at myself two weeks ago when I arrived here, I feel like a different person today. To be able to see the two communities, the southern and western province, connected together with this bridge that we partnered with them to build, I will cherish his memory uh, forever. The people here are so kind and happy and uh, I, I hope to be able to bring that happiness back with me. Thank you, Mary Cosa.